a lot's been made of the backstage politics in wrestling over the years. This podcast industry has been completely built on it, right? <laughs> and I was wondering, does AEW have less of a culture, not in a good or bad way, but in a qu quantity way? Because you guys get flown in for one show a week as opposed to doing a bunch of shows and being on the road together. Is, there, is it less political or is it harder because there's less communication? Uh, so I don't think there's less communication than, and let's just say we're comparing to WWE. I don't think there's less communication than with WWE. Um, I think that there has been, there have been times where some of the wrestlers have leaked that to, uh, the dirt sheets for whatever reason, but they've never experienced wrestling outside of independence. Um, and I have in WWE and in WWE, there was, you know, at the time when I was there could have changed now, but there was no communication at all. Uh, you know, even up until the, the, the start time of the show, uh, communication was very, uh, you know, hit or miss. Um, so I don't think there's a lack of communi communication there. Uh, as far as politics go, um, I don't, uh, the political game is not the political game in WWE was not bad at all. The boys got along great. Uh, I think the girls got along great as well. Um, and there was no real political uh, maneuvering there in WWE. Uh, I think the, the, the problems were between the office and the boys. And th that's what the, the problems were um, at AEW. I don't think there's a lot of politics either, to be honest. Um, the boys have a, a male locker room. And the people who share that male locker room share a bond uh, and and share a kinship. And every single uh, Wednesday, um, you, I think you could ask anybody, every single Wednesday, myself or Cash or myself and Cash, um, we bring a bottle of tequila and we have drinks with with the guys um, just to make that uh, that camaraderie even stronger and to make the kinship even stronger. Um, so I don't think there's any political games as far as that goes uh i think that uh <laughs> when you're in a power of pos when you're in a position of power um obviously even when you're not in a position of power you're always going to look out for your best interest because no one else is going to look out for your interest the way you are sure that's what you do too right we right. Do it, right absolutely absolutely uh but when you're in a position of power you're allowed to look out for your best interest and you know, more often than not, you're allowed to get it. Um, so, uh, but again, playing politics, uh, I don't know if that's what you call it, but, I, you know, when there is someone, let's say you, for example, as a, uh, as a music teacher, a music instructor, and you've got your own business and you're doing very well next door, another music instructor uh, moves in and he's you know uh buy one get one free or right. buy right. buy three sessions and get three free uh and then he pulls away some of your your talent or some of your um some of your kids but he's not as good but no one really knows that he's not as good you know right. and so right. there's gonna come there's gonna be that competition and i feel like there's that competition i'll just say it there's that competition between us and the young bucks um and uh you know I think it's a healthy thing because that's why our 2022 was so great because we didn't know what we were going to get. We didn't know what uh, opportunities were to come our way, but we knew, and we had made a promise at the end of 2021 that whatever we got, we were going to kill it and we were going to have fun doing it. Um, and so, you know, whenever you have competition, uh, I guess some things could be misconstrued as political uh, agendas, but more often than not, you're just trying to compete and be better than someone else. Well, that brings us close to that big night in Chicago, you know, promoted, you know, he, Tony Khan was really coy and clever about it. He never said CM Punk, but he booked a building that only CM Punk could fill, right? It's kind of brilliant stuff. Wait, did you get official word he was in or did you just figure it out like the rest of us? When did you know for a fact he was in? Uh... I knew for a fact that when he debuted, uh, but I had heard, you know, rumors and, you know, the boys and the girls talk. So I'd heard rumors and I'd hoped the rumors were true because we needed him. This was a guy who left WWE, didn't want to go back necessarily. And if we could land him, we landed a huge superstar, maybe the biggest 
wrestling star in the world at the time. Uh, and he was someone that WWE couldn't get. And that to me made us stand out, you know? Uh, so I was super excited. Uh, absolutely. And he debuts, packs the house August 20th, 2020 on the first dance event on Rampage, uh, challenging Darby Allen. You said the boys talk, the people talk in the back. You said you had trepidation. Were there other people? It was, was there, it was a kind of a thing like, don't screw up this locker room, buddy. Like we want you here, but was there a lot of worry about that? Oh yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, you know, a ton of, a ton of guys were worried about that, but you know, I mean, that's human nature. When something is going good, you want it to continue to go good. And, uh, when someone new, I mean, uh, listen, when me and cash came into AEW, there weren't very many people that were happy to see us there, man. I, I'm, just being blunt and honest with you. Um, for example, uh, you know, he and I've talked about it, but, uh, Jack Perry was not happy to see us because he thought that me and cash were going to come in and change up his whole style and, and try to make him someone he's not. Um, so it, you know, it just, it's not just CM Punk. It's just whenever you have harmony in a locker room and things are going well, change is kind of hard for people. So yeah, there were a lot of people that were worried about it. Now, at the same time, you're kind of, you know, this is, uh, you know, like I said, it was uh, 2021, August 20th. Uh, where was FTR at this time? How was FTR doing when <laughs> CM Punk debuted? Not well. Uh, not very well. Um, I, I f We were in the middle of uh, the pinnacle, and um, I was not happy with some of the things that we were doing. I uh, was not happy with our position on the card, which is okay. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever be satisfied with any of that. You know, uh, that's what makes, I think makes me better is, and it makes everyone better is, but that you want more. So you're going to work hard for more and more and more and more. And then at the end of the day, when you're done with your career or done with whatever you're doing, you can look back and say, okay, man, I did all right. I did okay. But while I'm in it, I want to be the best. I want to be the absolute best that I can be. Uh, I want people to look at me in a certain light. And uh, I wanted, obviously, my boss to look at me that way. I wanted the fans to look at me that way. And I just didn't feel like at that time we were being perceived that way. So I don't even think we were there that night. I mean, I could be wrong, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't think we were there. But you saw it, and you saw the reaction. And of course, backstage, you saw what it did for the company, and everything is changing. You've got not just one of the biggest stars in wrestling history, but a guy that we thought was going to retire. He's coming back. And you guys in the pinnacle, and you said, we talked about topics for the show off, off the air. And you said, yeah, pinnacle. We got to talk about that one. And we talked the other day, and you said pinnacle with like a wink and a nod. Now you just said, you, you don't you weren't really happy with the pinnacle. We're going to go deep dive into the pinnacle at some point. Was it kind of being thrown into a faction where you were an afterthought as opposed to being kind of the featured tag team? Is that the main issue you had or what was the problem with the pinnacle for you? Absolutely not. I, I was excited about this opportunity. I mean, to work with, you know, the future of professional wrestling, uh, MJF to work with my buddy, Sean Spears, uh, to work with, an incredible talent in Wardlow, who is another person who could be the present and the future of wrestling. Uh, obviously my best friend by my side and Tully Blanchard leading the ship. I was super excited about this because I, I you know, as a big Mark, uh, I was thinking of uh dangerous Alliance, you know? Um, Absolutely. And we, yeah. Right, and we, yeah. and we started off great, man. Uh, the, the first week we were there, the second week was okay too. And then it just started, uh, things just started falling apart there. And, uh, you know, he's my buddy now, but uh, Max and I, our relationship started falling apart as well, which we'll get into all of that. Um, but it just wasn't a fun time for me mentally. It wasn't a, f and you know, that's also when I started going through my struggles, but it wasn't a fun time for, for me mentally. Um, I had a few injuries as well that I was working through uh, that I didn't tell anybody about except for cash. And uh, I was just, I was just in a, a bad spot then. 